Since its announcement in January, the DJI Mic 2 has been the talk of the town as this great new step forward for prosumer audio solutions. But does it actually live up to the hype or is it just another mic to add to the never ending list of wireless microphones? Well, let's find out. I've been using the Mic 2 system in my videos since it was released, and I wanted to kind of take some time to get a feel for it before making a video like this. So let's start talking about which features are actually awesome, and then I'll throw a little bit of cold water on the fire. First things first, we have the backup recording functionality on the DJI Mic 2. This allows you to record directly into the transmitter itself with a simple press of this red button on the side. What's great is that you're recording directly into the transmitter, meaning you don't actually need to use the receiver, nor do you need to worry about getting too far away from the receiver, because if you lose signal, you'll still have your backup recording. That means that in theory, you could get away with just purchasing the cheapest option that DJI offers, the DJI mic transmitter only at just $99. Recording directly onto the receiver is a solid user experience as well. Depending on your settings, you get between 11 and 14 hours of internal recording on each one. And all you need to do to access those recordings is connect the transmitter to your computer via USB-C, and you're easily able to open your file, file browser to access the files. For you mobile creators, you can also connect these directly to your phone and access the recordings there as well. Now, the downside to going the transmitter only route, however, is that all of the transmitter settings are accessed via the screen on the receiver. So like, I'm not sure that you could set up 32-bit float recording if you don't have the receiver, which don't worry, we'll get to 32-bit float in just a second. Second thing that's fantastic about the DJI Mic 2 system is the thing that all of these wireless mics excel most at, and that's their versatility. But I think the DJI Mic 2 takes this to the next level. First and foremost, the transmitters can fit just about anywhere. You can hold them, you can clip them to your shirt or a bag, or you can clip them to your hat. Or you can magnetize them to yourself or to a hat or to a bag or anything that's metal. Or heck, you could just like, you know, toss them in your pocket. Easy as that. Because of this internal transmitter recording, nothing's stopping you from just using one of these. Or you could connect the receiver to a camera with a 3.5 millimeter jack, or you can use one of the included USB-C or lightning adapters to attach it to a mobile device or your computer or something. It also integrates seamlessly with the DJI Osmo 3, uh, the Pocket 3, or the Osmo Action 4. This is a GoPro, so it doesn't integrate with this, but you get the picture. Another thing I love about the DJI Mic 2 is how idiot-proof they have made it. When you're looking at a solution like this, you have to think about who the target audience is. Usually it's solo creatives who are kind of doing everything themselves. There's no boom operator or sound mixer monitoring the levels for you. There's just you. And you're probably somebody who wants to focus on filming rather than constantly worrying about audio. DJI has a ton of features built in to help with this. Obviously we have the backup recording setting that we've talked about a lot, but there's also little things like the recommended camera settings that allow you to select your camera and it will auto apply gain settings for the best results for that camera. There's also a nifty little feature where when something gets unplugged, it'll notify you on the receiver. You also get these visual and tactile notifications when different functions are enabled or disabled. So if I hit record on a transmitter, we'll get a red light on the transmitter, a little vibration on the transmitter, and on the receiver, there will be a red indicator on the screen showing which transmitter is recording. For me, that is a huge peace of mind. Similarly, one thing that is a constant source of concern is miking talent and that lapel mic coming loose. Now, DJI did not go with the screwing lock mechanism, but they do have this little small slot under here on the transmitter that allows you to clip the cable so it's basically impossible to pull out. That's what she said. I'm also a huge fan of this setting on the receiver that allows you to auto power on and off the receiver when connected to a camera. So it'll automatically power on and off when your camera is turned on and off. This is a big win for preventing accidental battery drain and for making sure you don't end up recording a 25 minute take with no audio. You, I'm looking at you. I know you've done that, don't lie. Potentially the biggest idiot proof feature of them all is the inclusion of 32 bit float. This will reduce your record time to 11 hours from 14 or 15, but that's more than enough for the vast majority of scenarios. 
With this, you don't need to worry about setting your levels when recording to the transmitter. Now you can just mic yourself or your talent, and you don't need to be stressing about any large changes in audio levels because 32-bit float will allow you to recover it in post. Now, there's a lot of hullabaloo on the internet about the importance of 32-bit float, and I think this is where we need to start tossing some cold water on things a little bit. I think a lot of non-audiophiles think, oh, it's 32-bit float, I don't need to worry about anything else. But this isn't actually the case. 32-bit float is great, but it isn't the panacea of audio. Just because you have 32-bit float doesn't mean it'll actually sound amazing. 32-bit float primarily helps with audio levels, not audio quality. If the microphone you're using is a piece of junk or the audio treatment of your room is poor, it's still gonna sound like junk. So the DJI Mic 2 has built-in microphones on the transmitters. They're certainly good and they're better than a lot of the cheaper options in the category, but they're not perfect. They still don't stack up to high-end shotgun, condenser, or dynamic microphones. So let's do some tests. This is a test of the DJI Mic 2 with no post-processing. This is a test of the DJI Mic 2 with the DJI Lav Mic and no post-processing. This is a test of the Shure SM7B and Zoom F3 recorder with no post-processing. This is a test of the Rode NTG5 and the Zoom F3 recorder with no post-processing. This is a test of the Deity D4 Duo straight into camera with no post-processing. Obviously, the DJI Mic 2 doesn't sound as good as many of these higher-end options, but those options are obviously not as versatile, they require a lot more gear, and well, they're a lot more expensive. One way to improve the audio quality is to use a lav mic. DJI has their DJI lav mic, but there are also loads of other lav mic options out there as well. I actually just started ordering a ton of different ones to test out, so if you want a follow-up video to determine which of these works best with the DJI Mic 2, let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, check to make sure that you're already subscribed. Now, something else that a lot of folks around here on the internet have touted as a way to improve your audio quality is to enable the noise reduction mode. This is done by pressing the power button while the transmitter is already powered on, and it's supposed to remove the background noise and isolate just your human voice talking. In theory, this is great. In practice, well, let's test it out. So we'll start with the noise reduction off, and I'm just gonna say a few words and test out how this works. Now let's turn on the vacuum. I'll say some words and we'll see how this works. Now let's turn on that noise reduction. I'll say a few words and we'll see how this works. I mean, I don't know. You can obviously still hear the vacuum. Now granted, this is a pretty difficult scenario to go through. But honestly, there are many tools out there that are able to clean up audio now. Most of them are built right into your video editor. So now let's run that same test with no noise isolation activated on the DJI Mic 2. I'll say some words and we'll see how this works. Now I'll turn on the vacuum again. I'll say some words and we'll see how this works. Now I'll enable the voice isolation in DaVinci Resolve. I'll say some words and we'll see how this works. Doing this in post is far more effective. They have great solutions for Adobe and DaVinci and like online tools that can do this for you. Don't get me wrong, it's cool that they've included this built in, but it's not some game changing feature by any means. Okay, so the next thing might seem minor, but it's honestly one of my biggest drawbacks on the DJI Mic 2. And for some reason, I haven't seen anyone else talk about it. It's the receiver mounting point. A lot of people say that it is improved from its predecessor, but in my opinion, it's still awful. So you can slot it into any hot shoe on any camera just fine. Like it fits actually quite well, but it doesn't work on any cold shoe. So for me, I often have my FX3 rigged up in any number of ways, but almost all of them have the hot shoe covered. I figure, no big deal because I have a cold shoe on my FX3 cage. But no, if you put the receiver on the cold shoe, it falls out immediately. I was thinking that perhaps I could like get a little piece of Velcro and somehow Velcro the receiver to the camera in some way, but then the receiver won't fit in the charging case. So if any of you have a solution to fix this, please let me know in the comments. So with all of these limitations and annoyances, do I think that the DJI Mic 2 is worth the hype? 
Well, if you don't already have a good wireless solution that you're happy with, I do think that this is probably one of the best in the category. If you are already happy, then I don't think there's necessarily a need to upgrade. Once I've finalized my lav mic solution, I think I'll personally be a pretty happy camper with this. And if this video made you a happy camper, be sure to play thumb with the like button and subscribe. I post new videos like this every week, so I'll see you in the next one. Peace.